Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Trading Chief and uh, just want to give you a quick heads up. This is probably going to be a very long video. Uh, I want to go over what happened with CDTX and NCNA on uh, Friday um, because it's pretty odd how CDTX got an FDA approval and it tanked 30%. Like that shouldn't have happened. Uh, and then NCNA, it got its court appeal reversed, so there's a reason why it tanked. It's down to 88 cents uh, currently in the after hours of trading. I suspect it'll probably go down a little further and then re start to rebound up, um, but it, it should come back up above a dollar uh, within the next week or so. Um, with that, I'm still very bullish on CDTX. Uh, as you can see, I posted in the Discord. Both of these were heavily shorted the last three days. This one's got almost six million shorts, uh, six million uh, uh, shares shorted. This one gained almost three hundred thousand. Uh, well, like a hundred, like one hundred eighty thousand probably. Uh, and that was on Friday. So, and here, here's the reason why I'm bullish on CDTX. It it collapsed off of uh, this news right crap which one was it this one right here return of capital employed overview and I don't know why anybody would be concerned about this especially when they just got their FDA approval the day before right or actually the same day they just got their FDA approval the same day, and this news article came out and tanked the stock. And um, so, first, I want to want to go to the go to the internet and show you what I'm looking at. Right? Um, Rose, Roseo, I think it's Roseo. Resifungin, now approved, Roseo, available summer of 2023. Oh crap, let me show you, let me show you why I'm bullish on this. Okay, if we go over to the, this is the, um, what am I looking at here? This is the, um, this is the AK. Oh, wrong one. This is the AK, right? And right here, it says, we have completed a transformation of 2022 for Sidera and are carrying the momentum into 2023. With the recent U.S. Food and Drug Administration approval, the resifungin for the th treatment of candidemia and invasive candidiasis in adult patients with limited or no alternative treatment options. Uh, this approval enabled Sidera to receive a $20 million regulatory milestone payment under the terms of of our agreement with Melinta Therapeutics. Rezafungin is the first new drug in, in this indication in over a decade, and our U.S. commercial partner, Melinta, is well positioned to bring Rezafungin to the U.S. market. Importantly, under the terms of our agreement with Melinta, Sidara is eligible to receive up to $40 million in additional regulatory milestones and up to $370 million in commercial milestones. Now, I remind you, at, at the current moment, Sidara has only got a market cap of $73 million. So you're looking at 60 plus 370, that's $430 million with this one right here. But this is only looking at one partnership. Sidara has three partnerships. And I'm going to show those to you here in just a second. There's a lot of money in this. So this one has $370 million in commercial milestones. Plus tiered royalties in the lower double digits to mid-teens in U.S. net sales of Rezafungin. These expected revenues would help advance our Cloud Break Drug FC con uh, conjugate platform programs in the, uh, in the completion of our ongoing global Phase 3 respect 
Michael Flaxon study. That is their 8K. Here's their 10K. This is what I want to show you right here. This is why I'm so bullish on it. Check this out. Uh, where is that? So here's the cloud break stuff. Janssen collaboration agreement. On March 31st, 2021, we entered into an exclusive worldwide license and collaboration agreement with Janssen collaboration agreement. Uh, with Janssen Pharmaceuticals Inc. or Janssen, one of the Janssen Pharmaceutical Companies and Johnson & Johnson to develop the commercial one or more DFCs based on our CloudBreak platform for the prevention and treatment of influenza. Under the terms of the Janssen Collaboration Agreement, we are collaborating in research, preclinical and early clinical developments of CD388 under the mutually agreed research plan with the objective or advancing development through phase one clinical trials and phase two alpha clinical trial. We're responsible for performing all IND enabling non-clinical studies in early stage clinical trials under the research plan. Both parties are responsible for conducting certain specified chemistry, manufacturing and controls development activities under the research plan. Jensen is solely responsible and reimburses us for internal, personal, and out-of-pocket costs incurred in performing the research plan activities in accordance with an agreed budget. After completion of the research plan and upon its election to proceed with the development, Janssen will, will be solely responsible for late-stage development, manufacturing, license, commercialization. Upon the effectiveness of the Janssen collaboration agreement, Janssen paid us an upfront payment of $27 million. Not much. As the execution of the Jensen Collaboration Agreement, we're eligible for reimbursement by Jensen of up to $58.2 million in research and development and incurred costs and activities. As of December 31st, 2022, we have received $27 million upfront payment, $25.1 million in research and development reimbursements, and $3 million in milestone payments. We're eligible to receive up to an additional $237 million. There's a, there's a big number. And regulatory milestone payments from Janssen for successful completion of certain activities over the next several years, including but not limited to Janssen's decision to proceed with clinical development and in initiation of a pivotal trial. I'm trying to read fast, so I'm sorry. In addition, we may be eligible to receive approximately $455 million in commercial milestones as well as royalties on tiers of annual net sales at rates from the mid single digits to the high single digits. Resifungin is a novel right here. Restore phase three clinical trial. Check this one out. Here's the Melinta one. Right? Melinta agreement. We talked about it earlier in the uh, 8K. 460 million, 30 million up front. Right? Here's the other one that's not listed Munda Farm Collaboration Agreement. September 3rd, 2019, we announced a strategic partnership with Munda Farm to develop and commercialize resifungin in an intravenous formulation for the treatment and prevention of invasive fungal infections solely for resifungin. Under the terms of the collaboration license agreement with Monday Funding, a Monday Pharma collaboration agreement with Monday Pharma Medical Company or Monday Pharma, we granted Monday Pharma an exclusive royalties bearing license to develop, register, and commercialize resifungin outside the U.S. and Japan. The total potential transaction value five hundred and sixty eight point four million dollars including an equity investment and upfront payment global development funding and certain development regulatory and commercial milestones the company is also eligible to receive double digit royalties in the teens on tiers of annual net sales as of december 31st 2022 we have received nine million dollars for the sale of our equity in munda pharma 
a $30 million upfront payment, $31.2 million in global development fundings, and $25.1 million in milestone payments, including an $11.1 million milestone payment creditable against future royalties payable to us. So there's still a lot more money that's going to come into Sidara, and as I showed you, summer of 2023, when this one comes down and it goes into production, and you're looking at your third quarter finances, um, I expect. Yeah, I know it's a long way away for a lot of people, but I expect you're going to see Sidara jump up closer to what it what is what was the last six dollars by HC Wayne Wainwright I don't think it'll I think you'll see closer to five uh, I think you'll see closer to five five dollars but there's that one NCNA um, this one I'm still bullish on because even though excuse me even though they had their uh, decision revoked technical board of appeal the European patent office issues oral ruling that New Canada's 190 patent is not valid all right we kind of suspected this as the article came out the day before but the article that came out the day before the trial, or two days before the trial, said that two of the um, patents were nixed. There was five total, so I'm not sure how, I, I don't know if they all fell under this one patent, or this one patent, or whatever the case was, but... Um, so that's kind of discouraging as this whole thing talks about. But it says, while we are disappointed by these decisions, they do not impact our core business of developing innovative new medicines for the treatment of patients with cancer. New Canada is well capitalized. All of our clinical programs remain on track, and we expect multiple data announcements in 2023. So I just want to point out that this, this patent does not affect their current pipeline that they have going forward. Um, and I think this will continue to be uh, a stock that I'm going to swing uh, throughout the year as this comes in and out. So, with all that being said, I finally want to go over the stock that I've been working on for the better part of two weeks. I mean, this thing is massive. It's got... The, the history on trying to get the FDA approval that's coming for this one uh, extends all the way back to 2018. And I'm not going to click on all these news articles. I kind of made a list and put it in um, a Word document, which I'm about to drag across the screen. And we'll just kind of go over it. Um, but I, I do want to show you that they have an FDA approval. It's coming. Uh, let me see. I forgot when this thing was coming. Um, shoot. I usually put a date right here when the FDA is and I didn't write it down so let me look I want to say it's May 29th but let me look let me see bear with me for just a minute Actually, you know what? We'll just go. We'll just go through it. I'm not gonna 
record this video. This video is already going to be long, so we'll just go through it. So, uh, let's look at it. This is for the, the stock ticker I'm talking about is LXRX or Lexicon. Like I said, this one has a wild history trying to get it FDA approved, but it was for type 1 diabetes, the, and this is kind of what I, I pulled out of all of it. It says the endpoints has gotten first lexicon predecessor in interest sanofi aventus ussLC or sanofi submitted an nda 210934 for sotagliflozin oral tablets in 200 and 400 milligram strengths on march 22nd 2018. Uh, sanofi is no longer their um, partner that's why it says predecessor in interest on March 22, 2019, the Office of Drug Evaluation issued a complete, a complete uh, response letter. The CRL stated so tagaflozin demonstrated excess risk of diabetic ketoacidosis, and that is not justified by the drug's modest clinical benefits. Um, Lexicon subsequently appealed the ODE, its decision. Uh, to the Office of New Drugs by submitting a formal dispute resolution on September 3rd of 2019. On November 29th, 2019, the FDRR was denied by the OND. That's the, yeah, your uh, FDRR is your formal dispute resolution request. Um, Lexicon appealed the denial of the Center of Drug Evaluation and Research. Appealed the denial to oh to the Center of Drug Evaluation and Research CDER on December nineteenth of twenty nineteen, and the CDER also denied the appeal. On November tenth, twenty twenty two, Lexicon submitted a request for an opportunity for a hearing. On so November tenth, twenty twenty, on July fifth, twenty twenty two. The CDER served on Lexicon a proposal order denying Lexicon's hearing request. Um, this filing followed appealing that denial. The central issue is DKA or diabetic keto ketidosis, which is described thus: diabetic ketoacidosis is a life-threatening problem that affects people with diabetes. It occurs when the body starts breaking down fat at a rate that is much too fast. The liver processes the fat into a fuel called ketones, which causes the blood to become acidic. The company contends that um, diabetic uh, ke um, uh, ketoacidosis is a serious risk. It can be mitigated by a proper REMS or other unapproved inhibitors like sotagliflozin have been regularly used off-label by type 1 diabetics. Patients with the same uh, diabetic ketoacidosis risk and all this, the CDER has done in this re uh, regard is to issue a non-committal declaration. The company also says that if the FDA addresses the diabetic ketoacidosis issue as Lexicon proposes, that in terms of efficiency, sotagliflozin is highly approval. The FDA denies all of that. Here's a brief extract from a study response, uh, sponsored by Lexicon that summarizes their review. In patients with type 1 diabetes confirmed DK uh, incidence is increased when sotagliflozin was added in to insulin compared to insulin alone. A lower in, uh, incidence of DK was observed following the implementation of an enhanced risk mitigation plan, suggesting that this risk can be managed with patient education. The FDA's review, which was remained consistent throughout, the data demonstrated that the addition of sotagliflozin to insulin is associated with the increased risk of diabetic ketoacidosis, serious and often life-threatening consequence in insulin ins insufficiency. The agency said in a rare explanation of its complete response to letter, time to event analysis 
Of the clinical trial data showed earlier development of DKA and cetagliflozin in treated patients with then in patients assigned to placebo without evidence that the risk stopped increasing over time. So moving forward, according to an agreement made between the FDA and Lexicon in September, if CDER continues to recommend that the FDA's Office of the Commission uh, Commissioner deny Lexicon's request for a hearing, CDER shall. What the fuck was that? Shall submit Lexicon's request for a hearing. Lexicon's response to CDR's analysis of request for a hearing, including any additional analysis by CDR, Lexicon's response, and a proposed order denying the request for a hearing to the Office of the Commissioner by January 31st, 2023. They shoot a lot of fireworks here in uh, Hawaii. And uh, that one was pretty much right outside my house. I'm scared the crap out of me, not gonna lie to you. Interestingly, the EMA approved Sotagaflozin in April 2019 in Europe, where it is sold as Zinquista. Their approval opinion makes for an interesting reading when contrasted with that some all or some will say is the FDA's stubborn big brother. To DKA was 2.9 percent, 3.8 percent, and 200 milligram and 400 milligram cetagliflozin pool data. Man, that's a lot to read. Moving away from cetagliflozin and type 1 diabe uh, diabetes, the molecule is also being tested in heart failure patients. This is where they're changing their course on it. Just two weeks after the FDA again denied the type 1 diabetic application, it accepted. So Tagaflozin's resubmission and heart failure with a tentative May 2023 Hadufa date. This is the resubmission because it was originally filed in December 21, then withdrawn in March to correct a technical issue. Uh, in two phase three trials, soloists and scored so Tagaflozin met the primary endpoint showing statistically significant reductions in cardiovascular deaths, hospitalizations for heart failure, and urgent heart failure visits in patients treated with sotagliflozin as compared with the placebo. This was a type 2 diabetic patients where repeated trials have shown no DKA results from sotagliflozin use in both these trials. DKA events were negligible. Key data from the heart failure trials were 33% absolute risk reduction in the composite cardiovascular endpoints in type 2 diabetics, patients with acute decompensated uh, heart failure, with consistent results among patients with preserved uh, ejection fraction and reduction, you know, whatever this stuff means. Benefit was evident with one month, 26% reduction in the uh, composite cardiovascular endpoints in patients with T2D and chronic kidney disease. Benefit was evident with three months. Reductions in HF heart failure related events were more pronounced at the target once daily dose of cetagliflozin 400 milligrams. Reductions in both myocardial infraction and stroke were greater than reported in studies of selective inhibitors. So, and then just some more articles that I pulled, you know, whatever, so I didn't have to try to find 25 news articles in here. So I, I just wanted to bring this to your attention there. there it had an interesting history because it's already approved in in Europe, right here, uh, and it's under Zenquista, but the FDA continues to deny it for type 1 diabetics, so they're changing their course on it, and it's now a heart failure drug, which is doing very well um, in, in this phase trials, and it's going, and, and it, it was approved, they accepted the 
the um, um, they accepted the um, application for heart failure uh, to 2021. Uh, I'm sorry for um, so Tagaflow's resubmission for heart failure. So uh, with them changing the course and, and aiding something different with it, they accepted it. So I just thought it was really weird. Um, I think this is going to be a, a very risky one to get in to try to trade for the, uh, the uh, FDA approval. But at the same time, it's, it's going to be high risk, high reward type deal. So... Ultimately, your your choice to get into LXRX. I might. I, I think I'm gonna take a small position in it. Um, but I just wanted to kind of talk about everything that happened on Friday. Oh, I didn't even cover. You know what? Let's look at this one. Uh, and then I wanted to go over this one. But on Friday, I also made a video on FAR. P H A R. And this one, um, if we look at it, it got its FDA approval a week early. And it went from $10 all the way up to $17.81 and then came back down. So, again, you tell me that CDTX's FDA approval was, wasn't manipulated here. So... All right, that's all I got. I just wanted to bring these to your attentions. Um, sorry for the long video. There's a lot to cover. Um, but again, have a good morning, I guess. Good night for me. So uh, come, come check us out in the Banking with Billy Discord. It's going to be in the uh, description down below. Thanks. Have a good night.